Howdy groupies, this is Mark from Groupable and in this video I'm going to cover how you set up your chart of accounts to record income and expenses. So I'm logged in here as a local user. I'm going to go to income and expenses here on the dashboard navigation here and then in income by account or expense by account, doesn't matter which one you do this from, click the menu icon and go to manage accounts. So this screen is your chart of accounts for income and expenses. And you'll see that I actually already have two income accounts, one for dues, one for fees. If we click that, you'll see that this account is system managed. That's true for both of these. So there's nothing really for you to do here on this because they are system managed accounts. Now, you're obviously going to probably need more than just these particular income accounts. In the upper right hand corner we've got a plus sign on the panel for add account. So I'm going to add a few basic accounts. Like let's say that we collect donations for different purposes. I'm going to create a donation income account. And then I'm going to click that to open it up and you'll see right under here I can add a donations sub account. Because we probably get donations for different purposes. So I'm actually going to add an account for each one of those purposes. So I can do something like our state charity and I'll create that there. So that would be if anybody gives us money that we need to pass through to our state charity. We might also have say a youth group that we sponsor and people may occasionally give donations for that. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Let's say that we're running a capital campaign because we need to do some improvements on our building. We can create that. So those are different types of donations that I can get. I could also add another income sub account. I can do that here. I can also click the plus sign. And let's say that we also occasionally rent out our building and we get income from that. I can type rent, click create. Now I've got an income account for that. Let's say we also do an annual fundraiser. So I could also do an income account for that and create that. Now, this chart of accounts is really flexible. So what's interesting is that the state charity and the youth group, those are really pass-through donations. And so I might want to actually group them under another account so that all of the pass-through donations roll up for purposes of reporting. So I can actually add another account under donations called pass-through. So I can create that and then I can actually edit the state charity and change its parent account to pass-through donations and click update on that. So now if I open up pass through donations, you'll see that the state charity is under there. And the youth group, that's really a pass through also. So I can click edit on that and move that to the pass through account. And so you see that that's now been updated and that's my structure now. So when I do reporting, I'll see all of the individual state charity and youth group donations. I'll also get a total for the combined I'll have a separate capital campaign, the pass-through donations, which will show me what my total donations are on a report. On the expense side, typical things like, say I have a building. So I create a building expenses account. A lot of times under that, we can add some sub accounts. Things like insurance, repairs, say capital improvements, uh, let's see, utilities. But I think you get the overall point. We might have uh, an expense account, say for like office operations. Some things that might go under that. Notice I'm just clicking it to open it. And then I'm clicking that add office operations sub account uh, postage. That's a common one. 
we obviously probably need some supplies for our office operations, you know, things like paper, toner, things like that. And you can build out this structure any way you want. You can nest the accounts up to five levels deep. So you have a really a lot of flexibility here. And you, the if you are the controller or the secretary of your local group, you should get together with the treasurer or if you have a budget committee or whatever that is and figure out what this overall chart of accounts should look like. At least get those initial top level accounts in place. Things like building office operations, if you have a parent group, like we have that uh, annual fundraiser over here on the income side, so we might want to track the expenses for that annual fundraiser right here so that we can break those out from our, our normal expenses and know exactly what that is. And you know, under here, you might have entertainment or you might have the uh, food and supplies for running the event. So those are things you can do so that you can really have a true detailed look at what your expenses are. Now on here, you'll notice you got a few controls. We've got this here, which brings up the edit. The pencil brings up the edit. You can actually pause an account so that when you're going to do date entry, it won't show up on the drop down lists. It won't show up uh, for options. It'll show up in reports if there's anything there because obviously if there are transactions, we want to show those to you in a particular date range, but you could pause it. Also, if you want to break it out, you can see any of the transactions right here that are in that particular account. And then also you can go to the full detailed screen for any particular account. You see this is my, my uh, Silva 216 income and expenses income account annual fundraiser up here on the breadcrumbs. I can see this here. I can move back up to the income account, get the full detail. If I had transactions here, they would show and these would be my sub accounts. So that's the basics about how we work with that chart of accounts in managing and setting up that chart of accounts. Okay, now that we have that, that overview, of the chart of accounts from scratch. Let's talk about if you are a person who used Finances 1.0 moving into Finances 2.0 and what that looks like. So starting out from a main screen here, when you go to income and expenses, any of your income and expenses that were already in the system are gonna be migrated for you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have any work to do. And all of your income categories and your expense categories and expense items, they have been converted into income accounts and expense accounts. Now, in the classic system, the expense accounts had two levels to it, but the income didn't. And so if we look at this, we see that I've got donations, donations, donations. I kind of have three different donation income accounts. So I'm actually gonna go to the chart of accounts and we're going to restructure this and take advantage of the features that are in finances 2.0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a top level donations income account. And then I've got capital fund, DMLA chapter and state charity. Now the capital fund that's for our local, but the DMLA chapter and the state charity, those are really pass throughs. So I'm actually going to create an account under here called pass through donations and go ahead and create that. Now we're going to edit the existing accounts and move them around. So I'm going to take this donations capital fund. I'm going to click the pencil here and I'm going to change its parent to the donations account. And you'll see that it moved underneath donations here. I'm going to take the DMLA chapter, donations for that, and I'm going to move that under the pass through donations account. And I'm going to take the donations for the state charity, which aren't ours. We have to then pass those through to the state charity. 
and I'm going to move those under the pass-through donations and click update. And so this is a little thing that you can do after you migrate from finances 1.0 to finances 2.0 to actually take the income side of your account structure for your chart of accounts and have a, have some more hierarchy or structure to it so that you can do some better reporting. So that's a little bit about how that chart of accounts works when you're coming over from finances 1.0 how you might want to do a little bit of restructuring there.